Open your Bibles, if you would, to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. What a great, what a great book, talking about the future, right? And I want to read three verses, and then I want to talk about one of them, and I'll try to make this as short as I can. So let's close in prayer. No, not, not quite that short. <laughs> Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. I want to stop there. Specifically, these three verses, and especially as we look at verse 3, this specific verse kind of lays in the context of what John is about to pen down about what he saw. That is very specific, though, in verse 3, blessed is he that readeth and he that heareth the words of this prophecy, the prophecy of the revelation, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. There is a specific context here, but there's also a general context I want to share with you this morning. Let's look real quickly at that verse 3, and there are three things Yea, four that I want to point out to you this morning about the importance of verse 3. First of all, to read the Word of God. To read the Word of God. It says, blessed is he that readeth. Now, for many, many years I have been told, and maybe you have heard this in, in in your local church or by your parents or by your pastor or whoever, probably not me, but they say that there is no blessing for Bible memorizers, only Bible meditators. They might even go so far to say that there is no blessing for Bible readers, but there is a blessing for Bible meditators. Now, while that is, in a sense, true, there is a blessing for, yes, Bible meditators. There is a blessing for those people who read the Word of God. There is a blessing for those people who read the Word of God. As a matter of fact, God used His words and then And then they were penned down, written down for us to read that we may receive a blessing because of it. Now, I don't know about you and your spiritual life where you're at with your reading of the Bible. And I know maybe certainly as as the last uh, couple months have have kind of made us a little weary, maybe you have, have read the Word of God more than what you normally would. Maybe, maybe you are lacking, maybe you're, uh, I don't know, maybe you're, you're, you have something else on your mind where reading the Word of God can be difficult. I'm looking at Joe Gatlin, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at Brooks, but no, I'm kidding. Um, maybe maybe you, you, you have been, uh, you know, concentrating on something outside the Word of God, but can I tell you, blessed are those people who read the Word of God. God uses the Word of God to richly bless people. As a matter of fact, knowing what it is you're reading is important. When you look at Matthew chapter 22, I believe it is, and Jesus began to condemn, in a sense, the, the, the uh, Sadducees. He condemned them because they err not knowing the Scripture nor the power of God. They didn't know the Scripture. One way that you know the Scripture is by reading the Scripture. One way that you know the power of God is by having read the Scripture, being able, to, being able to reconcile what it is you see versus what it is you read. Does that make sense? It's amazing that the liberals out there, and I'm not talking political liberals, I'm talking theological liberals, they say, they can't possibly be a miracle because you haven't read the Scripture. And as soon as you read the Word of God, then you can reconcile that this is certainly the hand of God moving. And you're able to reconcile that. So do not not err not knowing the Scriptures. So read the Word of God. There's a blessing for you. 
And, and can I say this, that there is a blessing for other people when you do read the Scripture. How is it that you can, you can impart to them any value of truth if you're not reading something of value? You know, I've been blessed to work with Joe Gatlin, and he's a, he's a, he's a hard worker, and I appreciate it. And Sometimes we're, we're driving around, sometimes we're just sitting there, and, and, uh, and he pops open this, uh, this little Bible. Now, I don't know if that's, a, if that's the full canon of Scripture. I don't know, is it, the, is it the New Testament and Old Testament? or That's just the New. I was going to say, if that is the Old and New, they look like microdots. You know what a microdot was used, uh, anyway, to transmit uh, classified information, and they're like this big. You'd have to hold that thing up against your eyeball to be able to see it. But he opens that little Bible up and holds about four inches from his face, or six inches, and he sits there and he reads it. And he reads it while we're driving down the road at times. And if you can read anything driving down these Davenport roads, you're I mean, very, doing very well off. But he sits there and he just, he just reads and he reads, and I'm just so thankful. I'm blessed because he's reading the Word of God. We can all be blessed when we're reading the Word of God. So number one, first of all, read the Word of God. There's a special blessing there for you. Uh, secondly, secondly, hear the Word of God. Also in Revelation 1.3, it says, not only blessed is he that readeth, but it says, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And I've already said that contextually it's talking about this prophecy, but can I tell you that blessed are you when you, hear, when you are hearing the Word of God. Don't you just love to hear what God has to say? I mean, let's, let's face it. If, if Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, then it's really important to hear the word of God. Sometimes for me, what I enjoy doing is uh, I enjoy just uh, opening up the Bible app. I don't know how many of you guys have a, a Bible app on your phone. See, years ago, you'd have to ask, how many of you have cell phones? <laughs> now, we, now we just take it for granted, right? How, I don't know how many of you have Bible apps on your phone. Raise your hand. Bible apps on your phone. Do, do yours have, a, have an audio option where you can listen to it? How many of you just love Alexander Scorby? Raise your hand. Alexander Scorby. I just love, I don't know who he is, but I love him. And when I get to heaven, I think he'll be there. He had to be. I mean, he read the whole Bible. He had to get saved, right? So I, I just, when I get to heaven, I'm going to be so thankful for Alexander Scorby. I just love listening to the Bible app. And, and just hearing the Word of God. This is a one way that God is able to speak to us through hearing the Word of God. You know, incidentally, you cannot smell the Word of God. You can't smell it, and you can't, you can't necessarily taste it. You can't drag your tongue across the Bible and, and get information from it. Right? God uses essentially two senses. You can't, you can't feel the Word of God unless, of course, it's Braille. And in that, ten, in that case, it's maybe a little different. But, but essentially, you can read the Word of God and you can hear the Word of God. This is the medium God has chosen. And so if you're not reading it and you're not hearing it, you're not hearing of God, really, in a sense. You need that in your life. You need to be reading and you need to be hearing. And there's a special blessing for those people who are reading and also for those people who are hearing. Never neglect that. There is just a tremendous amount of wasted time. Tremendous amounts of wasted time. Most people say, I can't get through the Bible. So, well, there are essentially 72 hours worth of Bible. 72, or 72 hours. Did I say ounces? I said ours. I don't know why I'm thinking ounces. It's much, it weighs much more than that. <laughs> 72 hours worth of, worth of Bible if someone was to read it. People who travel in and out of Chicago every day, travel two hours into Chicago, two hours out of Chicago, it doesn't take that much time to actually listen to the entire Bible. And if that's all that you ever did, you'd probably be better off than most people. Listening to God's Word as a whole is invaluable. Listen to God's word. Number three, not only do you want to read the word, you also want to hear the word of God. Thirdly, you want to apply the word of God. Revelation 1.3 also says, and keep those things which are written therein. Keep means simply to, to guard, or uh, it means to protect, it means to obey, or it means to apply. Apply what it is you've heard from God's word to your life. Now, I've said before that, application is the most important thing. Like I tell you this morning that before you can apply something, you have to somehow know something. 
And the way that you're going to know it is not by necessarily smelling the Word of God. You're not going to be tasting, in a sense, of the Word of God. You're not going to be you're feeling the Word of God. You've got to hear it. You have to read it. That's how it's imparted. And so we need to be applying the Word of God, but first and foremost, you need to be hearing it. Now, this is, it seems normal for a Christian it should seem normal, I guess. Normal for a Christian to, to pick up the Bible, to read it, and, and uh, spend some time in the morning or listening to the Word of God. I'm not talking about listening to the Word of God being preached. I think that's valuable. This seems normal. But I think there's a lot of times out there where there's a lot of Christians who are not reading it, who are not hearing it. This is critical for growth in your life. If you want to apply something, you first have to know it. And the way we know the Word of God is by, first and foremost, reading it and then hearing it. And then we can apply these things to our lives. How can you memorize something of the Bible if you've never heard it or if you've never read it? We need to do these things. And lastly, lastly, let me just say this. In Revelation 1.3, it says, For the time is at hand. The time is at hand. This is a universal principle. There is coming a time when people will not listen to the word of God. They will not hear it. They certainly will not obey it. They will do everything they can to avoid the word of God. And I think that we're going to see that coming soon in the church. Listen, you don't have to not come to church because there's a Bible, you don't have to not come to church because, um, because you're, you're, you're ignorant of the truth. You can just not come to church because you're afraid that someone next to you might contaminate you. Now, we'll do all other things. We'll do all other things. We'll go, we'll go to Walmart, right? I mean, Howard mentioned Walmart. We'll go to Walmart. We'll go to, the, we'll go to other, the grocery stores. We'll go to Menards and things of that nature. But you know what? People, I think, are going to be scared to come back to church, and they might use this as a, as a reason. Friends, there is going to come a time that people will not just uh, n- not neglect it or, or reject it, but people will say, I am afraid of being around people, so I'm not going to come to church. There will come a time when this is going to happen. Time is running out. For the time, it says, is at hand. And there may come a time when we will not be able to meet. You know, what's really interesting is we've done very, very good, I think, as a society as a whole, trying to obey the, the, the regulations, the, the uh, suggestions of the government and the CDC and others. But they have not necessarily came into Northside Baptist Church and said, you will not meet. We have voluntarily not met, but there may come a time, and there will come a time, when they will say, you are not allowed to meet. That's when, that's when things are going to get really tough. But I thank God that we're meeting together in this place. I thank God that we're here. We, and granted, we've got a, a half a dozen or a dozen people listening uh, via Zoom But I thank God that we're all here today. I'm thankful for mothers. I thought I'd hear an amen. Okay, so it's kind of like, that was really horrible. Let's try this again. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for mothers. I'm thankful for Dana putting up with me for so many years. You know, this week's going to be our 16-year anniversary. Now, I promised her a long time ago that I would take her to Hawaii on our anniversary. And you know what this year is? This is not the year. <laughs> Actually, I need to find a little, a little uh, town. One of these days, we're going to be traveling somewhere, and uh, there's going to be a shop, and it's going to be called Hawaii. <laughs> and we get our picture taken out front of Hawaii, you know, say, hey, I brought her, brought her to Hawaii. Maybe Brooks can Photoshop something, you know, that we're in Hawaii for anniversary. Happy Mother's Day to all you ladies. And if you're not a mother, that's okay. You have a mother. And, uh, and we're, thankful for, we're thankful for them. We're thankful for life, aren't we? Aren't you thankful for church? Aren't you thankful for uh, air conditioning? Are you thankful for the, the pews, the padded pews? 
We're thankful for uh, technology when it works. Other than that, it's just part of the accursed thing. I'm just thankful to be here. 